Hey guys, um, I want to give you the simple instructions on how I clean out my hot tub after just like one night of use. Um, this is just the way I do it. Feel free to do anything you want to. I keep a blanket on top. It helps keep some of the heat in. Um, and plus I kind of just like the look of it. But I'll show you, I've got the six person Intex. You know, as you see the lid's not fully on because I closed it up, you know, last night. And let me just give you a little quick uh, demonstration on what I do to clean this thing out pretty quickly. I'll take off my little cover here, blah, blah. Put it off to the side. And get this lid off, okay? Probably gonna need both of my hands to do so. But give me one second and I'll go ahead okay, and get so that the lid. lid's off and as you see, maybe you can't see, but there's little floating particles in there. Um, I left the seat in there, I usually take it out. And my little floating uh, chlorine bob. Um, so my water levels, yeah, it's okay. Could probably use a little filling. I might do that today as well. That looks a little bit murky. This water is just about to a point where it needs to be drained. Um, they say to do it every month or so, but it really depends on, you know, how much, uh, you know, how clear it is. And, you know, you always want to feel really closely, especially around the sides. If you get any mold or algae around here, you know, that's gonna be the death all to your to your water, as far as I'm concerned. Now, there's different things that you can do to um, shock it and stuff like that, but I find when it gets to that point, it's ready to be drained anyway. So let me give you a quick demonstration of cleaning it up. My seat, get drain, put it over here at the side. I keep these out of there because um, A, it makes it easier to clean, and uh, that's just the way I like it tough without a tripod to kind of give you an instance but I take this guy out this guy's really cool see and it's uh, the pellets almost done um, those pellets are kind of hard to get online so you want to order in bulk and I use the skimmer now something that I do there's a dot on one side and not a dot on the other so I always skim in a certain direction so I'm not like <laughs> putting it back in the water also something I find that works really good for me is as I'm doing this um, before I turn the bubbles on, I get the top layer and I go in a circular motion. Now what this does, shut it off. What this does is this creates a little circle in the water and you'll see that all the dirt particles will end up in the middle at the bottom, the ones that don't float. Kind of interesting. And if you miss it on one pass, it's gonna come back around to you. Kind of interesting. So let me get this and do this for a minute. And as you see, I'm picking up debris like that. I like to take it, tap it out. That works pretty good. And when I do get hair or something in here, that's when I'll take the hose to it and spray it out. Or if I get a bunch of dirt. But you see, just after one use, it's quite a bit of little debris in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this, create a little um, circular motion here. And as you'll see, I'll show you in a second, right dead center, all the dirt will kind of compile. So let me just do this a few times. Get working back. on it, and you see I've got some debris in my skimmer here. And it's, see the circular motion I'm creating? I'll show you that in a minute when it gets to the bottom. But just keep going around and around. And you know, one thing I like to do, or should I say not to do, is to get in and out of the hot tub, because I'm outside. So I do have a little canopy over here, which is great. But you come out and get back in one time, man, your dirt pile just doubles. Anyhow, this is only two people in it and still collecting more dirt. So where it comes from, I have no idea. A few times, I'm not really seeing, you know, I see some stuff kind of forming in the middle, but usually you'll get a bunch down at the very bottom down there. You'll see it's, it's slowly collecting. I cleaned it out pretty good yesterday. Um, not after I used it, but before. Anyhow, I always leave the pump and everything running. I keep a sticker on here because I don't like the bright lights that comes, but I got the heat on and I also have the circulation going and it's summertime. So I got to just set at 98. Now, okay, look at this. You can start to see down there. Let's see if the camera can pick it up. It doesn't really pick it up, but the dirt is forming there. And you can see it there. It's forming in the middle. So it's a way of just kind of like creating a little suction um, and get all your dirt into the middle. Kind of interesting. But what I'm going to do today, just for demonstration purposes, is check these filters. Now, on the Intex, this, like I said, six-person, I've got the light, which is amazing. 
and then the main filter and a secondary filter over there. Um, there you can kind of see the dirt collecting in the middle. Anyhow, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I turn this, the heat off, then I kill the circulation. Now, that circulation takes a minute before it shuts off, uh, but once it does, just let it go and do its own thing. And look at that, you can see, let's see if the reflection, there you go, you can see the dirt collecting there in the middle. Kind of cool. Anyway, um, you got little spotches and stuff around the sides and you can use some of these different brushes and stuff to get that off. It really doesn't bother me. Um, you know, as you see here, these guys, I'm sure there's some stuff I can use or maybe, yeah, something I can use to get that off, but I don't know, just, uh, I could use it for sure. You see around there, but it doesn't really bother me that much, but I could definitely give it so a go. So doing so, I'm gonna look for my other brush. I keep all my chemicals here and this is the brush I use. So I get this guy, I'm gonna get this guy wet uh, with a hose first instead of using that water because I don't know what kind of dust has been collecting on here. And let me just scrub some of those sides. Off with the hose. Oh God, there's a spider. Oh God, look at him, he scared the crap out of me. Well, something about being on the outside. I'm gonna push him in the water so I can scoop him and let him go do his own thing. See you later, buddy. Um, like I said, I always use this side with the button or whatever to pull from so I'm not just putting my stuff back in the water in case there's something in. But you see how it's centered in the center? I can scoop that out now, give that a tap, and go down here, down there, and try to scrape that up. It doesn't always work that well, but after a few times, it does. Anyhow, that's the way I do it um, for this. <clears throat> Occasionally, I'll get out the shop vac and just suck out just the last bits on the wet vac to uh, get out whatever I, this skimmer won't get. break from the skimming, because that does take a little while to get everything out. As you see, I got that circular motion going again. Now with this brush, just with water, I don't have any chemicals on here. Let's try and work on some of these. Maybe you guys can give me some advice on getting that off, because it doesn't, it's not really, it's really embedded in there. So it's almost like part of the plastic, but if you see here, if you start scratching, it does come off, but not really. It's almost like the plastic. I don't know, maybe somebody's got a good suggestion for this, but like I said, it doesn't really bother me that that's there for some reason, and I'm pretty anal retentive. <laughs> okay, so the things have shut off the circulation. So now I'm gonna go here and unscrew one at a time. And when I do this, I keep it straight up and I make sure I dump that water because that's going to have some hair or anything in there. I don't want that back in the water. Shaking that out. Okay, so I've taken them both off. And as you see, this is obviously the main filter and the secondary. Now, what you can do is you can spray this out um, or, you know, maybe spray this one and then to replace this guy. This is definitely a replace. For me personally, um, I'm just going to replace both of them at this time. Uh, it feels a little bit lighter, you know, like if the main one was looked like this one, then possibly I'd keep one or two, but I'm going to go ahead and okay, replace so them. Here's what new filters look like. And there's several different styles of filters. There's what the old ones. So I'm definitely going to get rid of them. And you also kind of want to make sure inside here, you want to give them a good wipe out. Those are still dirty. And then let me show you something else. Now, look, you don't have to put the caps on, but if you can look down here on the main filter, let me show you something. Look at that. I mean, gross, right? But that's all part of life, I guess. Anyhow, see how in the circle, in the right in the middle, I've got some dirt. Like I say, sometimes I shop back that out because those little particles can be really tough. You try to swipe it and it just moves on you, but I'll work on it again later, but let's get these things back in. I cleaned out a little bit more. I still have these off. Now, here's something that's very important. When you get these things, the thing that's gonna mess up your system is air. Give you an air 99. You don't want that. So, you wanna, so what you wanna do is this, submerge it, shake it. Get all that little air bubbles out. See them? Get those things out of there. That's what you want. So you got a new filter in, air bubbles are pretty much out. Shake it around and make sure it goes back in properly. Just don't force it. You'll know when it's good. You got that one? And then coming over to the other one. Yeah. 
And again, submerge it. Get those air bubbles out. That's what's gonna give you that air. I'll put it back on. Sometimes they can be a little tricky. You just wanna kinda take your time, feel it out right. Make sure it's the right screw. You don't wanna force it. That, then you know you're not doing it right. Okay, so those are back on. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on um, the bubbles first. I still got some more cleaning out to do, but I'll get that. So I'm gonna turn the bubbles on. Now, what this is doing is putting air, getting all the air out of this water system. It's taking water in, taking water in and spitting it back out. So you wanna get the, the bubbles are saving you from getting any errors. After you have the bubbles on for a minute, then click on your filter system and then your heater. You can give it a little more time than I'm doing, but I think that's pretty much enough, okay? But it's all about getting the bubbles out. Okay, so I can turn it back off, let it settle down for a second. All good, I'm gonna do a little more cleaning out. We're about to get a storm here, but um, let me clean it out a little bit more then we'll go over the chemicals. After running the bubbles for a minute, look at this. So that's after changing the filters. You're getting more stuff. So it's good to keep those things um, replaced quite often. Um, and you can just check them, you know, um, from time to time. But usually it depends on the activity that you're putting into this thing. Depending on whether your hot tub is level or not, you'll see because this side might be lower than the other side. So mine is a little bit off kilt. But so I'm gonna go ahead and add the water and fill it up to the max area and just add some fresh water. Because I know it looks pretty good, but it's still a little bit murky. And we'll get over chemicals in just a second. But I'm gonna let this go ahead and fill up. Okay. Oh, lots of skimming. I got this one on Amazon. In fact, I got everything here on Amazon. If you uh, just kind of look it up or if you need a link, let me know. But it's almost full. Now something to consider when you're getting in this thing is not to have a bunch of suntan lotion on or lotions for that matter and if you do have a little outdoor shower over there to rinse off before you get in it really makes a difference in your chemicals I'm not any type of expert i just do what works for me and it may not work for you but i always want to keep a rag and clean off your sides um, i've got an aftermarket top because my original one busted this one i'm not a big fan of but it works and see like where i had the hose just give that all a wipe down around the sides just gonna keep you clean because you know you want to sit on there once in a while or do whatever you do put your arms on here you want to keep it clean we're looking pretty good so i'm really happy with where things are i filled it up to where the other side is full and let's get to the chemicals the test strip you'll take one out of your thing and you're supposed to hold it under like three inches under the water for about two seconds one two three or whatever pull it out and then you're going to be able to see how you compare here now my chlorine Right, it's, just, uh, it's in the middle of okay. Sorry, that's good. And then down here for my alkaline is probably good. It's in the it's in the good. And then my pH level, as you see, okay, I'm terrible at doing this. Gotta do this a little bit better. Um, chlorine is about good. Alkaline is good. pH uh, looks a little low. I always add a little more chlorine. I like it to be a little more purple. And I add pH. I do that almost every time. Here's my chemical list of things that I use on a regular. These chlorine tablets, big time, yes. Um, chlorine, obviously. I use Leisure Time. There's a whole bunch of different products out there. Bright and Clear, just still have a bottle down here, is your best friend. And Foam Down, um, that's for when you're in the hot tub and it's foamy. It'll knock it down pretty quick. Um, but I also use Defender a lot. Now that's gonna keep that, that algae from growing on your hot tub. And then the calcium booster and enzyme I use only when I fill up, um, and I think of baking soda, but that's only when I fill up water. So like today I'm gonna use some of that. And then for your pH, you got up and down. Really all you need is up, you don't need the down. So if you were to have to buy the chemicals, these are the ones I recommend. Hey guys, I'm gonna use each one of these chemicals today. Um, reason I'm gonna be using these two is because of I added some water. Basically, it just helps the city water um, turn a little more spa. Um, not an expert, just telling you what I do. And so I'll use chlorine, about a little cup that it comes with, uh, the spa up, 
for sure. That's gonna bring up the pH. Use the other two. Now, always something I like to do is always throw Defender in there and Bright and Clear. So get it brighter. And Defender is one of your best friends to add just a little bit. Now, I'm not gonna show you exactly how much I use. You can just ask me in the comments. But as you see, I'm gonna put all these in. Now, something that's important to do when you go to put them in, you turn on your bubbles. It's just a melting pot, right? I'm gonna go ahead and add them. And you'll Make sure you shake them all up. I just added a, a little bit of this. I added a little more bright and clear than normal. And then the others. Now this is off that chlorine chart. This is how much I'm gonna add. So, you know, I'm the guy that cooks without the, uh, without the recipes. But I add that in there, shake it up so, you know, with the bubbles on, pretty important, I think. Just scatter it all around, let it mix itself up. Okay, so everything's in. I'm gonna cap these up and turn the water or the, the bubbles back off. The bubbles off, and as you see, it does look a little murky and I could probably give it one more little skim. Um, this is normal. You're gonna be a little bit murky when you add all these chemicals and stuff into it. I let the bubbles run for, you know, about a minute, maybe. Um, and I'm gonna give it a little, one last little more skim and then put the top back on. So that's pretty much how it's cleaned in a general daily routine-ish. Everything's clean, as you saw. I wouldn't have put the lid back on. I don't strap it down unless there's some huge rainstorm or windstorm. Please, guys, I might get in it tonight. But, you know, keep in mind when you're cleaning that this guy under here, look at this, you know? So, I mean, you could spend all day cleaning, 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 but I just want you to keep in mind that under your lid is usually a lot of dirt and little mold that will come, you know, you can get out. It's another step you can do, you know, it's constant maintenance. <laughs> so it depends how real crazy you want to go with it, you know, as up to you. It's muggy out here today. It's about to rain. And if you know, if you pulled off one good thing off of this thing is maybe cleaning it in a circular motion. That way the dirt just comes to you instead of you chasing around. Um, also making sure that the air is out of the filters and you change your filters regularly. So um, if they learned anything, even one thing, it was hopefully worth your time. <laughs> Thanks.